Yeah, we did. Uh, she had a lot of fun. It was fun to see her. She could, she actually said happy birthday to somebody, <laughs> so she was a little confused there. But yeah, we we had fun. <laughs> what did she, she was Elsa. She loves uh, Frozen, so she got to be Elsa. She wanted her wig on the whole time, so she had fun. So well, that they, they rank so well as a run defense? Um, I mean, they do a lot of blitzes. Um, they throw different combinations at you as far as the blitzes that they do. Um, I think they are, they're a solid group um, from the D line and on back. Um, I think they play physical, they play fast, they fly to the ball, and um, you know, they're tough. So you, know, you got to make sure you prepare right to get ready for these guys. They play well um, together as a group. You that that 35 minutes of possession against the Texans last week. Is that an important element that you got to keep maintain this week, trying to maintain that time of possession and controlling the ball to keep their offense off the field? I mean, yeah, you, you want to do that because they're so explosive and, um, you know, they can score at any point in the game. And, you know, you know what type of player Patrick Mahomes is and have fast receivers, Travis Kelsey, so they're a special offense. So we want to make sure that we need, we're doing what we do to keep the ball out of their hands just so it gives us a Give us up a chance. That uh, the one-yard touchdown run that you had, uh, how unusual was it to see things so clear in front of you? What went so well on that that there was virtually? Um, I mean, everybody just blocked well, and I was shocked that it went how it did. You know, wasn't nobody there. So, yeah, that was probably one of the easiest ones I probably ever had. A lot of credit goes to you for wearing down defenses, like your fourth quarter success. But how much of that is being able to, to see something early and, and, and remember that look and get back get back to it later uh, in the game? Yeah, I think that's just everybody being locked in, um, seeing what the defense is giving you. And then if we run a play and they gave us one look and then remembering that on the, um, the next time you get in the drive and you know executing it perfectly. But that's just everybody being locked in, tied in, seeing, the, uh, seeing what the defense is uh, throwing at us and then adjusting to it and making the play. Derek, you're on the injury report with a foot. How are you feeling? Because everyone's starting to panic. Oh, yeah. Um, my foot is fine. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong. I'll be out there um, on Sunday playing. So, foot is fine. There's nothing to panic about. Everybody have a, a great Thursday. So. <laughs> is it the same foot? No, Paul, there's, no, no, there's nothing wrong with my foot. The right or left, the foot is fine. I saw, I saw you had a conversation with Eddie after the game on Sunday. What's his support been like since you've been here? And, and uh, you think he's really happy you broke his record? Um, he's always been uh, supportive um, from the time I got here and, you know, doing the Heisman commercials with him, just talking to him, picking his brain and, you know, hanging out with him a couple of times. That's just how he's always been. And, um, you know, he's a great ambassador for this organization. So um, he's like a, a mentor, a big brother, and somebody that I've looked up to growing up. And um, it was just surreal to have, to have that moment and then actually talk to him on the phone. It's a challenge, Derek, of, of running the football when everybody defends, the whole stadium knows that you're going to run the football and, and, you know, what has to go well for, for that to happen. Um, well, you just – I mean, y'all have the mindset. I mean, they know it. Uh, just, just make something happen. And um, I mean, that's just us, us all being tied in and locked in and executing our job and me trying to run hard and, you know, make a play out of the play that's called. So, you know, when everybody knows, you just got to go out there and do it. Kind of along those lines, you know, you kind of mentioned it, you know, your ability to wear down teams in the fourth quarter. How much pride do you take in that with your conditioning that you're just as fresh in the fourth quarter as you are in the first? Yeah, um, well, I mean, Certainly, I just want to you know play good and do my job the best that I can to help this team. And whether it's in the first, second, third, or fourth, you know, I just want to be able to do my job at a high level and play the best I can to help us win the game. Eric, what does it mean to you to be named an NFL Offensive Player of the Month? Um, you give credit to my teammates. Um, I couldn't have success that I have without those guys. Um, offensive line, receivers. Um, you know, they being unselfish and and blocking down the field. Um, doing doing things that they need to do to, for me to have success. So I give the credit to all those guys and you know our coaching staff, and they make my job easy. Was it kind of cool to see Stonehouse in there too? Two guys in the two tone blue. Oh, I don't know if he's gonna be in there. He boots the balls, <laughs> so it wasn't no question. So I mean, it was no shock to me. I mean, we all see it. Derek, apparently teams are uh, averaging more yards rushing per game this year than in almost three decades. Uh, is it maybe just a confluence that this league that's supposedly a passing league with all the quarterbacks and receivers, uh, there come along a group of running backs like yourself that remind everybody, uh, the NFL, it's still important to run the ball? Is it a passing league? <laughs> no, I'm playing, but no. Um, that's some good guys in the league that's running the ball well. Um, 
that's efficient and been playing at a high level for a number of years. So just credit to all the RBs in the game and you know just keep killing it. Derek, I saw that just Kobe Bryant, a guy that you you looked up to your whole kind of athletic career and some of the things he goes by. Can you just share some of that and, and why you you kind of follow those words? Which, which one was it? The Kobe Bryant po- the Instagram post. Oh, the Kobe words of wisdom, I guess you could say. Yeah, I'm a Kobe fanatic, so <laughs> anything I see from Kobe on the internet, I screenshot and. You know, hold on to so anything I can implement from when he played his mindset, his work ethic. You know, I just try to take it and try to imp- implement it in mind. You know, he was a great player. I always stayed hungry, never never was satisfied. So one of my favorite athletes of all time is well, not my favorite athlete of all time, but um, you know, just a guy who was <laughs> great, won championships, but was always hungry and always had that drive. Did you ever get to meet him? You know, so funny. Um, it was. Uh, Right after I got drafted, I was going to the ESPY because I was up for like uh, college football player of the year. We were on the red carpet, and I think uh, his wife was pregnant at the time, and I was standing on the red carpet uh, with somebody who works for my agency. Um, and he was walking by, and she was like, you going to say something? You going to say something? And I couldn't say anything. I just, <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, I never seen him again. I was like, man, that still haunts me to this day. Huh? What would you have told him? I might have hugged him if I <laughs> know what I know now. So, but yeah, that's the only time I got to see him. And, I was on hush man. I ain't say nothing. You were uh, you were mic'd up over the weekend. What, what, what do, what's the reaction from other guys when they hear you're mic'd up? And uh, I mean, and do you have to watch what you say? And do you, do you enjoy that? The reaction that was my fault because I was the feds and I ain't let nobody know. So I kind of forgot. So <laughs> most of them ain't even know the whole time until after they seen it on um, Instagram or when they, when they posted it. But I gotta be, I gotta pay more attention to let everybody know I'm mic'd up. But yeah, it, it, it was fun and see the footage from it. You know, just interacting with everybody. When other guys are mic'd up, do they sometimes signal? I, I know other guys have talked about it around the league, like that they they make a gesture, like re, to remind teammates, "Hey, I, I'm wearing." I'm yeah, high. that's pretty much the the call. I'm in the fans today, so make sure you don't say nothing crazy. But yeah, usually if somebody's like says something to somebody, let them know they're not, let them know they're mic'd up. So yeah, that's how it usually goes. Who's the, who'd be the craziest guy mic'd up? Or who's who's the guy that says the craziest stuff on Sundays that would be entertaining uh, mic'd up? But. Yeah. I say Bud the Free for sure, yes. You didn't say a lot when you were mic'd up, but when you were speaking, you were encouraging your teammates. You, I saw you were cur- encouraging the league. Like, mm-hmm. Is that always you? Is, and like, why is it so important to be that for the um, You just got to stay with it. Um, in the games, there's going to be ups and downs and highs and lows, but you, know, you just got to stay with it. You know, just let them know that you know we all behind them. We got each other back and just stick stick with it. And then the play, a play be made when it needs to be made. What's, I guess, what's the balance between just sticking with what's working and, and trying to find something else on the call sheet just to keep the defense guessing a little bit? Yeah, we were on the ball at a pretty good clip, so there wasn't too much reason for me to be searching for uh, for things to keep them off balance. You know, we were uh, it was pretty impressive what those guys did up front and the way that the tight ends and receivers bought into how we were going to win that game. Uh, and so I was proud of the effort they put forth. You know, we're going to do what's best for this team, and sometimes that'll mean more runs, sometimes more passes. But uh, you know, I was proud of what those guys did. So I wasn't searching too much. With those 32 carries was that the what you wanted to do going in, or was that flow of the game that, that kind of dictated that, or was, was it both? Yeah, I would, I would say we certainly went in with you know the intentions of running the football. Um, but again, when you start drives and and you call a run, and then it's first and ten again, and then it's first and ten again, or it's second and two again. That that uh, provides a lot of rhythm to continuing to call runs, you know. And so, um, you know, it was, it was fun to be able to see some efficiency and you know sustain success there in the run game in the second half. It was good. Black, I guess when he found out he was officially getting the start, and how do you kind of think he handled the whole process? You know, I'll, I'll uh, let him speak for how he felt and what went through his head. I, I, you know, saw some excitement. I think that, you know, he handled things well from a maturity standpoint, not knowing, you know, that he was going to be the starter until, you know, later in the process, obviously. Uh, and there were some great learning opportunities, which there are for every young quarterback that plays in this league. Uh, and then there were some things that he did did well and, and managed the game well. So a lot to uh, improve on and, and grow from. And, uh, you know, I think he did a nice job. What do you, you know hope? Something really good with, with Chig there, who was, who was wide open on, on that play. It seemed to be like the perfect play for a rookie quarterback. And yeah. still it didn't work. Can you talk us through what 
what Malik didn't do or could have done there that, that failed it? Yeah, I think maybe just picked him up a little bit late, you know, in terms of what angle he set. Uh, it was one of those long foul balls. Would have loved to have it, and, and we got to connect on those uh, when you have those opportunities and you have, you know, the look that you prepared for and it's executed well from a tight end position. You know, we got to be able to hit those, and, and Malik knows that, um, you know, but it just was a matter of, I think, not picking up uh, Chig and his vision until a little bit later in the down. During training camp, that was a kind of what you guys talked about with Malik a lot was knowing where to go with the ball was there, but getting his body to a point where timing was there was something that he was working on. Is that an extension of that, still something he's working through, or has there been improvement that you've seen him make in that area? Yeah, I think that's always part of the process with a young quarterback, particularly one that can throw from so many different platforms and arm angles. And so as you process through some of those hard play passes, getting your body and your eyes back around, I think that's an ongoing process for all young quarterbacks. Uh, in particular, ones that didn't spend a whole lot of time under center uh, in college, you know. So that's that's part of the process uh, for a lot of guys. You wound up not running the ball a whole lot either on scrambles or by, by design runs. Did you guys want him to kind of stay in there and kind of see the play through, and make his reads rather than just abandon it and take off? You know, I think there's a, a delicate balance there. We had some, you know, designed opportunities for him where if one or two wasn't there, he could he could take off and run like on the first drive of the game, those types of things. But um, you don't want to force anything, you know, and you don't want to force the issue, particularly when a team knows that that's part of his skill set. Uh, and so, you know, we want that to come naturally to him. Obviously, there can be some design things or scheme things that, that you look into. Um, but, I, you know, I thought he made good decisions when to – you know, kind of go through his progressions and when to take off. It was a challenge, Todd, of, of running the football when the defense, everyone knows you're, you're going to run the football. What do you still have to do in, in order to be successful and, and kind of how rewarding is it when you when you are? What's rewarding for me is the, the culture that I get to be a part of and the guys that are out there um, blocking their tails off because when you have a defense that knows you're going to run it, they bring extra bodies down into the box. The only way to account for those is wide receivers being unselfish and going and blocking those safeties. And so I tip my cap to our wide receiver department, Cody Hollister blocking his tail off, Nick Westbrook blocking his tail off, Robert Woods, even Chris Conley got in the mix a couple times. Uh, that's, that's where it starts. And that's a culture here. That's a team buy-in that we're going to do whatever it takes to win football games, even if it means uh, you know, having great energy and, and great focus on the sideline. Uh, to figure out how to get Derek, you know, into his fourth and fifth step. So uh, it starts there. The second piece of it, I would say, is that you know you you obviously have to be sound uh, schematically and rule wise. And we're fortunate enough to have a, a center like Ben Jones that can get things identified and and get people going to the right spots. You're ready as Conley to do the receiving part of the receiving. Very, very sharp player. I, I think he's you know, able to do some translation to stuff he's done in the past. Uh, I've seen him grow each and every day he's been here. He's been working hard, meeting extra with the coaches. So he's, he's coming along nicely. What's the, you went through this last week, but what, what kind of challenge it presents you when you begin the week when you're not really 100% sure who the quarterback's going to be, whether Ryan's going to have any setbacks from as far as divisional reps to maybe what kind of plane you put in? Yeah, I think some of it's just, you know, figuring out what the load management throughout the week's going to be, you know, so that you feel like you have uh, preparation in all scenarios. And we do a great job here of laying out the schedule so that we can make sure guys get, uh, you know, whatever looks or whatever, uh, you know, kind of cans or visuals they need to. Uh, and, and so, you know, I feel comfortable with where we're at in that process. What all were you able to see from Ryan yesterday in practice? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the I'll leave the uh, curtain closed on that one. Uh, but I can tell you that he's working hard to get back, and uh, he's a competitor. That one yard touchdown run that, that Henry has, like, walks in, nobody touches him. What what went into that being so easy to get into the end zone when again? Everybody's probably expecting that to, to happen. Yeah, I think there's a, a, an adjustment to our motion, you know, bringing Jeff across in the motion, kind of loosen up the front side a little bit there. And uh, and obviously our guys did a nice job firing off the football. Um, you know, we, we go through our goal line rules each week and say if we want to score touchdowns on the goal line, the blockers got to score with their man. And, uh, you know, I think that was a good example of that coming to fruition. Meaning, Cole has been uh, successful DC in this league for a long time. What makes his defenses, you know, so effective? Yeah, obviously they're well coached, you know, and, and they're uh, good in their adjustments. He does a nice job of balancing different looks, showing you the same thing, and then changing the picture on you at the snap. 
Uh, I have a lot of respect for Coach Spagnola. I actually was uh, set to interview with him with the Rams when he got the head job, and I was hoping to stick around as a young buck. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a long story career of him, you know, producing good defenses and, and coaching his guys well. A lot of respect for those guys. His ability to kind of adjust to his personnel obviously he started off with like you know Justin Tuck and OC Humanure and Strahan that one year, and yeah. you know obviously players change and, and everything like that. What about his ability to adjust to the players that he has? Yeah, obviously he does a great job of figuring out what the recipe is going to be with the ingredients he has, you know, and, and sometimes that tweaks and changes week by week, and you can see that their staff's committed to figuring out ways to win with who they have. More back to that culture, we heard with, um, well, we heard what Derrick Henry had to say to Malik when he was mic'd up on Sunday. What were some of the things that you were telling Malik on the sideline to kind of keep his confidence up? Yeah, just to remember what got him to this point, you know, and to enjoy the moment. You know, I think sometimes we can, all of us can get caught up in the stresses of the job and, and sometimes in the stresses of the moment. And uh, one of the things that makes Malik such a special player is his ability to lift those around him uh, and to play with joy and passion that's contagious, you know, and, and I think that that's something that's going to serve him extremely well going forward in his career. And I just tried to remind him he's out there playing a game for a living, you know, so it's... Uh, it's going to be exciting to watch his development. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. It. Appreciate it. Have a great day. No challenge this week, Shane, right? Uh, you just have to go into Arrowhead, prime time, and oh, yeah, there's some guy named Patrick Mahomes. Having seen him and defending him the last couple of years, does that help at all as you go into this game? Yeah, I mean, uh, they're tops in the league and just about everything for a reason, right? Um, he's an extremely special player. Um, they got talented guys around him, you know, so. We gotta have a plan together, and hopefully our guys can go out and execute. And we gotta we gotta be able to execute with technique, fundamentals, do all the little things. Because um, if you get caught, like it's a big play, they're gonna make you pay for it. So we gotta make sure we're on our game plan and play out. You're How have you seen third down defense? They're first in third down offense. What what will ultimately determine? <coughs> Yeah, I think our execution and then uh, whoever makes more plays, you know. Um, I mean, they got a bunch of playmakers out there. Um, we're going to have to do a good job understanding what whatever coverage we're playing, um, being able to execute that, being able to affect the quarterback and rush, all that plays a part as well. But ultimately, whoever makes those plays on third down um, is going to play a big role in the game. How have you seen them continue to have that success in the passing game, even though Tyreek Hill isn't there? Yeah, I mean, I think they, they've done a great job schematically with what they do. Um, obviously, Kelsey's having a monster year right now. I think those other guys have came in there. Uh, they've gotten all on the same page. I think they understand kind of how it's, what they've done in the past, and they fit, fit in well with that. And I mean, ultimately, Mahomes is able to create some plays that most aren't, right? Able to elude pressure to extend plays, and you get all these faster guys, these stronger guys that catch it, and they're able to separate, and Kelsey's the same, recognize coverage and be able to separate and find voids in the zone. And as those plays get extended, they catch them, and they're tough to tackle once once they do get the ball. So, I mean, I think it's just kind of continued from where it's at. Those guys have stepped in, and they're they're rolling. How you seen from push the ball down the field as much, even though she did Cheetah's not there anymore? Yeah, they'll take the shots. I mean, they have a big one against San Francisco. I mean, some of those other big plays have been missed tackles or some busts at times, but he's he's they're down there. You know, they're running. So, I mean, we're going to have to make sure we're staying on top of things and making them earn it and doing a good job when they do throw underneath coming up and tackling those guys. This is a team that isn't afraid to, to come back in a game. Just how much do you preach the message of start to finish in this one specifically? Yeah, I mean, Shoot, we lived it in 2019, along with a lot of other teams have lived it since. So, I mean, it's going to be a four-quarter game. You know, when, when they got Mahomes back there and these guys on the perimeter making plays for them, they're never out of it, right? They're always one play away from getting back to a one-score game, potentially. So, um, I think they understand that. They believe in, in their ability to come back as well. So, we're going to have to keep playing, regardless of, of how the game goes early. Um, we, we know it's going to be a four-quarter game, regardless. Did you realize what Simmons had done on the play where he pushes the lineman into the ball carrier? And when you, what did you think when you watched it back on tape? Yeah, it was impressive. Um, I mean, you see the pad level, you see the technique, and you see just the brute strength, right? And um, it was it was great to show because it kind of illustrated a lot of the things we talk about, just being able to play the hands inside. And when able you, whenever you're able up front to play with that technique, uh, you really – 
are able to release all the power, all the explosiveness that comes out. When you're not playing with technique and pad level, that's when all that ability kind of gets hindered a little bit. So it was, it was a great teaching point, great clip for us. But he's a, he's a special player who's playing really well for us right now. Uh, this year in terms of pass rushing in particular, have you seen him? Yeah, much up? improved, much improved. I think uh, I think Thierry's gained a ton of confidence this year. I do. Um, I think he's playing at a different speed, not as reactive maybe. Um, so he's able to kind of unleash a little bit of his power and explosiveness as well. And he's, he's a tough matchup just because he's so big and so strong. Um, and he's found ways to counter off of it, which has been, it's been good for us. He's, he's impacted quite a lot in the pass rush. Jeff, uh, I mean, obviously he's still going to get the attention, but still. <clears throat> I think a ton. I mean, anytime, we tell these guys all the time, anytime you're one-on-one, you better find a way to win. It's a one-on-one -on -one league, matchup league, inside, outside, regardless. Like, you get the one-on-one, -on -one, we got to find a way to win. And then they're not able to kind of do whatever they want to do with Jeff because they got to worry about somebody else also. How good to get Elijah back out here? And maybe what does he need to show you to prove to you he's ready to go? Yeah, really good. I mean, he's he's been engaged. He's been around. Um, obviously, he's he's done a lot for us in the past. So hopefully this week here, as the week continues, we kind of see where he's at. Don't really have a lot of concerns in terms of mental for him. Um, what we do schematically, he's all, he's done it. You know, um, it's more or less just where he's at from a physical standpoint as the week goes. With this being a prime time game and against one of the top offenses, you know, do you kind of look at this as like a GPS game to show the rest of the league where your unit is? Yeah, I mean, I, to me, it's week to week. I mean, we're worried about us. We're worried about how we play, that we're showing improvement, which I think we have here these past four or five weeks. I think there's been some improvement. Um, and it's just continuing to improve throughout the season, regardless of who we play. Um, we got to keep improving, making sure we're honing in on details of whatever call we're making, um, the fundamentals, all those things. Those are the things you want to see as, as the season goes. And hopefully we can continue that trend. But I'm excited for the guys. They're excited for the opportunity to go out there and play. And obviously, you, you play against the best. Um, I mean, they're excited for that, that opportunity. Christian taken in your secondary to really be an anchor over there. He's talked all week about, you know, wanting to be that next level NFL corner. <clears throat> Just kind of what have you seen from him and his growth this year? Yeah, it's, it's great to want to be that, um, but you got to go do it. You got to be consistent. Um, I think he's been out there. He's been challenging. He's been tight in coverage. Um, I think he's done a good job not panicking for the most part down the field. Um, he's on body. He's tackling really well for us right now, showing up. Uh, in the run game and the screen and some of that type of stuff. Um, so he's, he's developed in his game into being really able to do everything for us, you know. So um, the biggest thing with him is just continue to challenge himself to do that, right? Like, to not let's not talk about it. Let's go out there and show it week in and week out. Mahomes said this week that y'all kicked their ASS last year. <laughs> so it's still on their minds. Are you all thinking about what happened last year or is it a new year? It's a new year. You know, like, I mean, they're, they're a different team. They got different pieces as well. We got some new pieces out there. Um, again, it's, a, it's another game right now. It's a big game. Don't get me wrong. It is. It's a big game. But um, last year was last year. Like, we know there ain't many games like that with the Chiefs. Very, very rare. Um, we caught them at on the right day, right? And we played well. They probably didn't play up to their standard, obviously, and they, they know that. So um, we're ready for ready for the challenge this week. We know what's coming at us come Sunday night. Ryan Stonewall, uh, AFC special teams player of the, the month. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, proud of him. Um, that was the original thought. Um, and also, we had to let Ryan know it's just not him uh, that's helping him out um, of getting that player of the player of the month. You know, there's a lot of guys that are helping him out, starting with Morgan Cox and uh, the guys that are on the punt team. But he's doing a great job for us. Really proud of him, the way he goes and prepares each and every week. Um, but we, we're telling him it's what he does in November, too. What is he going to do to improve? Um, and, I, and I know he will, and, and we're excited for him. How much different has this year been for you? Like, like with Brett, I'm sure it was really just small tweaks, uh, yeah. if anything. I, I'm sure sort of bigger bigger issues and, and different things to work through with Ryan this year? Yeah, anytime you have a rookie, there's going to be some tweaks that you'll want to do with him. Um, 
whether it's each and every day or during the week. Um, but, you know, Ryan, we want to play to his strengths, too. And he always hits a big ball. So we don't want to do anything that uh, takes him away from that. Um, but there's always certain things, whether it's his drop, whether it's direction, things like that, that we can work with him, we're always going to try to do. And the best part about him is he's willing to learn and, and try to improve on those things. He's also the fifth most pressured punter since 2018. Yeah. Before. Gen stats. Is that a ticking time bomb? Uh, no, I think our protection is doing really well. Um, How's he doing really well if he's the fifth most pressured punter since well, 2018? Yeah, well, I think the big thing is is we're hitting big balls and we do a great job of coverage. So now what a punt return team tries to do is, all right, well, if we can't get big returns and get a net of 40 yards, well, what can we do to help that out? So punt return teams now are saying, well, let's try to pressure and try to get um, one, a bad punt, or two, they can try to end up blocking a punt. Um, you know, because we're right now, I think we're one of the top ones in net punting. So now teams just got to try to do something different um, for us. So, and one of the things is maybe try to put pressure on a rookie punter. Anything unique about Arrowhead from a special teams perspective? I know some stadiums got swirling winds, some are, are known for other things. What, you've been at Arrowhead a lot of times. What, Unique about that place. Yeah, when I was with the Chargers, we played them obviously twice a year, but we'd always play them over there. Um, you know, the one thing that teams, when you get under the end of the year, weather changes obviously, and it'll get a little bit windy. Um, I think right now the forecast has it halfway decent, but um, the one thing that we've got to work on, along with our offense, obviously, is a, is a count, you know, when we want to snap the ball because it's going to be loud there. Uh, they do a bunch of different things with the guys on the outside, whether they're creeping inside. So we've got to really work on our communication with the guys because it is going to be loud there. Um, that's one of the things that we've been focused on all week. Anything you saw from Robert Woods last week? Yeah, um, you know, disappointing with the fumble. And uh, the one thing that we talked about, obviously, is ball security. Um, the other thing that we really focused in on is, um, you know, how it happened. Um, and we had two guys on one guy that end up making the play. And one of our biggest things that we talk about all the time is we got to protect our returners, whether it's our punt returner or kickoff returner. And we felt we let that, you know, slip a little bit because the guy who ended up making that um, cause fumble was a guy that we had double teamed. So uh, we've got to do a much better job of protecting our returner. Um, and it comes down to the end of the day of Robert, you know, putting two hands on the ball and, you know, giving the ball to our offense. Robert's still going to be that guy going forward. I mean, you don't see any any other options right now. Yeah, as, as of right now, he'll be the guy that's going to go back there. Um, you know, we got to continue to harp on ball security with him and uh, continue to harp on the other guys of doing their jobs to block for him. Um, but, you know, once Robert gets his hands on the ball, uh, you know, he gets over 10 yards. So, you know, that's one of the other things along with giving the ball to our offense is we want to get a first first down. So if we can average over 10 yard a punt return, um, we feel like we're doing well. You a uh, fan of Ray Guy growing up? Uh, did you see where he passed away? Yeah, I saw that. Um, I, you know, that's a that's a sad day, obviously, for his family. Um, he's one of the originals, you know, a uh, Hall of Fame guy that, that that's done a great job. And I'm sure our, the younger punters, I, I hopefully they know about him and all the great things that he uh, used to do with the Raiders. But uh, yeah, just a sad day with uh, Mr. Guy passing away. Did you ever see any of his stuff live? I can't imagine you were alive <laughs> at that point. But in special teams, do you study what some of the things that he did? Uh, you know, that made him such a great punter? No, I, um, to be honest with you, the only time I got to watch him was when I was a younger kid. Now, I, I grew up in the country, so we only had five channels. So we didn't get the Raiders uh, very much on TV. But, you know, you know he did a really good job. Um, I don't know how much Ryan has studied him or even us, but, uh, you know, what I do know is the guy would just bang the ball and did a really good job and obviously a guy who, who did it for a long time in his career.